Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do annuities, but more specifically, we are going to do present value annuities. Okay, Solly wants to buy a car for 125,000 rand. He pays a deposit of 15%. He then takes a loan for the balance. The bank charges him 12.5% compounded monthly. Right. What are they saying? Number one, he didn't take a loan for 125,000 rand. He gives a deposit of 15%. So it's 15% of 125,000 rand. Now this is simple calculation that you could do in your calculator. If you say 15% of 125,000, that would mean he paid in 18,750. So what was the loan amount? The loan amount will be 125,000 minus 18,750 rand, which will give us a balance of 106,250 rand. So we're going to take a loan of 106,250 rand. A loan means I go to the bank and I'm getting the money right now. Since I'm getting the money now, we're going to use the present value formula. What is the present value formula? Right, the present value is equal to x, open brackets, 1 minus, open brackets, 1 plus i, close brackets to the power of minus n, divided by i. Now what does each of them stand for? When we're doing it, we're going to do it much like we did it in the grade 11 work. In the grade 11 work, we'd write on our ping. But what we're doing now is we're going to write down our PV, X, I, and N. Now PV is basically your loan or the bulk of the money that you are getting now. So what is coming right now? What are you getting right now? Your X is the payments you're going to make. Your I is your interest and your N is the number of payments. Now. The I and the N, you're going to adjust it exactly as you had done your adjustment in grade 11. Now let's take the following question. If I've got my present value, which is 106,250, then I don't know what my X is. My I is 12,5 over 100 divided by 12. Now why am I dividing by 12? Because it is monthly, which will give me 1 over 96. I prefer working with a fraction because if you work or you round off early, your final answer would be incorrect. Your n is equal to, if it's over 6 years, we're going to times it by 12, which will give us 72. Now, exactly as you had done your grade 11 work, all we're going to do is substitute. Now, the algebra gets challenging in grade 12. So, if you are not okay with your algebra, you need to go back to all the algebra sections that we have done and mastered it. If you are not okay with your algebra, you are going to have a problem throughout your grade 12 syllabus. Right. Substitute what we have. So, we have... Right. Once you substitute it, if you look at what I am highlighting, that is attached to x. If I use my calculator and I simply get that value, you're going to press the fraction button. Then you're going to press open brackets, 1 minus open brackets, 1 plus fraction, 1 over 96, close brackets to the power of negative 72, close brackets again. Go down and you're going to press the fraction button 1 over 96 which will give me 50 comma 47655. Now remember 
you must get used to using the answer button in your calculator. So we have 106250 is equal to x times. Right. To get x alone, we're going to divide by 50, 47655. Divide by 50, 47655. You should be used to your answer button. So what you should press in your calculator is 106250 divided by your answer. If you are still not comfortable with your answer button, then you could press 106250 divided by 50,47655, which will give us 2104,94. So what is his payments? His payments is 2104,94 cents. Right, so let's go over this again. What you need to decide is, am I using present value or future value? Because it's a loan and the bulk of the money is coming right now, I am using present value. You substitute, you'd usually end up with 3 out of 4, exactly like your grade 11 work. Grade 11 work, the only difference is instead of X, you had A, and instead of PV, you had P. But the concept is similar. Substitute what you have, remember to do changes on I and N, and then substitute and do your algebra. Let's take another example. Right. Now this question is one of my favorites. Reason? Because it is absolutely deceiving. Okay. She received a gift of 80,000 rand. Now pay attention. She's getting the gift right now. That already should tell you its present value. But then they use words like this. She invests it. Now you already programmed to think investments means future value. But you see, what you need to understand is that future value and present value is based on when is the bulk of the money coming. The bulk of the money is coming right now. Who's getting the bulk of the money? The bank is getting it, that's fine. But it is coming right now. now because it is the bulk of the money, we know we're going to use present value. We have our X, we have our I, and we have our N. Now, what is our present value? Our present value is 80,000 Rand. We know what she is getting. She is getting back 25,000 Rand. Now, look at what they're doing. The language is deceiving. But what you are actually doing is, the bank is loaning from her. So the bank is taking the loan and the bank is then paying her back. And how much are they paying her back? They're paying her back 25,000 Rand every year. So she's basically loaning the money to the bank. So it is a loan. But because we don't talk in terms of what the bank is doing, we talk in terms of what we're doing, we call it an investment. But in actual fact, the bank is loaning 80,000 Rand from Sammy. And they are paying her back in installments of 25,000 Rand. The interest is 13,75 over 100. And we need to calculate N. Now look, you would notice that the interest is compounded yearly. But in the beginning, I told you that the interest rate and the interval payments must link. Now, if you look at this, the, it's compounded yearly. And she's taking payments also yearly. So can you see, if it's compounded yearly, then you have to have payments yearly. If you look at the previous question, her payments were monthly and her interest was monthly. What is important is that you must be able to notice that we are talking of present value even though it doesn't sound like it. Now let's go to our formula. Right, substitute what we have. We have X. I prefer simplifying my fraction, so I've got 11 over 80 to the power of minus N all over 11 over 80. 
Now, look where the unknown is. It is an n. We are trying to solve for n, which means this is a annuity that has a calculate n. We're going to solve. You're going to get rid of the 11 over 80. Know your algebra. So we're going to times by 11 over 80. And then we're going to divide by 25,000. If you are not okay with your algebra, I'm telling you again, you are going to have a problem. 1 minus Right, lots of children, they put this 1 minus 91 over 80 in one bracket. It is not together. That power n is only to this chunk. It does not work with the 1. It is only to the bracket, which means 1 plus 11 over 80 to the power of minus n. The 1 year outside still remains outside. Now this you can put on your calculator and solve it which gives us 11 over 25. Right, now we're going to take this 1 over, so we're going to subtract 1, and we have negative 14 over 25 is equal to negative 91 over 80 in brackets to the power of minus n. Now this negative, because it is on both sides, you can simply make it a positive or if you feel uncomfortable doing that then it's basically dividing by a negative so we end up with 14 over 25 is equal to 91 over 80 to the power of minus n now going back to your n's when we are trying to calculate a n that is an odd power, we're going to use the logs. So we have 1. We are going to put a log on both sides. The minus n comes forward. Minus n log 91 over 80 is equal to log 14 over 25. Divide by log 91 over 80. Divide by log 91 over 80. So negative n is equal to negative 4,5. Giving us that n is equal to 4,5. So how many years will she be will her investment finance her her investment will finance her for four and a half years this is a lovely question it's deceiving but it's got different um, qualities different things to calculate but if you can understand this question you shouldn't have a problem with any present value formulas thank you for watching